Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy OT. Today we're going to be discussing the three receivers with the best value. Starting things off at number three, Brandon Ayuk, the Arizona State Sun Devil, has been getting rave reviews out of camp. Coming off of his first 1,000-yard season, I see no reason for him not to do it again this year. Ayuk, to me, is the only true receiver on the team. Yes, they have Debo Samuel, but he's more of a, as he puts it, a wide back. He gets used in the running game, the return game, the screen game, which is great for fantasy, but it doesn't make him a true receiver. And of course, they have George Kittle as well, but you never know when he's going to be relegated to blocking. There are games where he's pretty much a glorified offensive lineman and doesn't run many routes. What excites me the most about Ayuk this year is the fact that he has a high IQ quarterback that knows how to throw him open, coupled with the fact that over the last two seasons, he really hasn't come off the field, boasting a snap share of 83% and 91% respectively. And what that tells me is that the 49ers both need and want him on the field as much as possible. And I don't think anyone in the 49ers receiving room is going to be giving Ayuk a run for his money anytime soon. Juwan Jennings is more of a possession receiver, that has a pop-off game here and there, but it's not consistent enough to worry about. Danny Gray is still really raw, basically didn't play last year in his rookie season, and they have Chris Conley, who's a bit older and is there for depth, really. Currently in 12-team leagues, Ayuk is being drafted around the 76th spot, which is the middle of the seventh round, and if you can get him there, that's a great value, but I would reach for him as early as the beginning of the sixth. Coming in at number two, Scary Terry McLaren. The former Ohio State Buckeye has been the lone bright spot on the Commanders for the last few years. He's also been doing his best DeAndre Hopkins impression, meaning it doesn't matter who throws him the ball, he just produces. I think he's caught passes from Dwayne Haskins, Case Keenum, Colt McCoy, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, and now Sam Howell. And in the one game him and Howell had together last year, it looked pretty promising. Howell gave him a 33% target share, and if that's any indication of what's to come, I think he's going to have a breakout year. Oddly enough, over the last two years, he's had exactly 77 receptions and five touchdowns. And I think this is the year he improves on both of them. With new offensive coordinator Egg Biennemi in town and the Washington Commanders having a new ownership group that's actually focused on winning, I can see McLaren really taking that next step. In 12-team leagues, he's currently being drafted between that wide receiver 20 to 23 spot. And this is a guy that finished as the wide receiver 14 last year. So I think if you can get him at that 20 to 23 spot, that's a great value. But honestly, I would reach for him a little bit early. He's definitely going to be a consistent WR2, but I think he may put up low-end WR1 numbers if Howell can really put it together and be consistent. Top in our list at number one, I'm talking about a guy that has the most receptions through two seasons of a career. No, I'm not talking about Justin Jefferson. No, I'm not talking about Michael Thomas. I'm talking about Amon Ross St. Brown. To say this man has exceeded expectations thus far in his career would be an understatement. Considering he's a fourth round pick, I feel like he still doesn't get the respect he deserves both in real life and in fantasy. He's easily the Lions' best weapon, and while he hasn't been a model of efficiency, his ridiculous target share more than makes up for this, averaging a little bit more than eight targets a game over his first two seasons. And that's actually a little bit skewed, because he didn't start till week five of his rookie season, and through his first three games, he had ten targets collectively. So I could totally see him getting close to 10 targets a game by the end of the year. The Lions and offensive coordinator Ben Johnson are not afraid to use their best weapon. We've seen St. Brown get work in the screen game, on crossing routes. He's even taken some rushing work away from the running backs. And I think that's going to continue this year. A true PPR slot machine with the added benefit of a receiving room that's largely unchanged, minus the fact that DJ Chark is gone and that they signed Marvin Jones and traded for Denzel Mims, I don't think the plan's going to change very much. If anything, he may get more work during the first six weeks while Jamison Williams is suspended. Currently in 12-team leagues, he's being drafted in the middle of the second round around that 20 spot, and I think that's kind of late. I would reach for him at the end of the first round. I think he's going to beat his ADP, and he could definitely pay dividends sooner rather than later. That does it for me in Fantasy OT. Those are the three receivers with the most value. Please subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments below.